Hi, welcome back to this Thursday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. As you are aware, we are in the middle of our Christmas Critter Campaign, 71% of the way there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your gifts. We're well over $100,000. Our goal is to get to $150,000 by Christmas, about 71% of the way there. So we're counting on you to push us over the top. I've been thinking about this. Kevin McCullough, you know, you can get a, a water buffalo for like 460 bucks, And so Kevin McCullough says, look, AFA Today, we are the, the, we're, we're, the we're the buffalo team. And uh, referred to the focal point team as the, like the chicken team. I don't know exactly what he meant by that. But it was sort of a throwdown for this listening audience to step up to the plate and meet the challenge from the AFA Today crew. But we want to get to 100% so that these gifts go into the hands of needy people in uh, Asia, particularly in the nation of India, which is one of the poorest places uh, on the, the planet. And as you're aware, in this Christmas Critter campaign, we partner with a ministry called Gospel for Asia. So this is about the gospel. This is about more than just meeting physical needs. It is about that. But it's also about meeting the spiritual needs of these individuals so that they get not only living water from a biological perspective, but from a spiritual vantage point uh, as well. So we've been encouraging you to buy a gift of a, a critter or some other kind of gift that will be delivered to the needy people uh, in India and Asia. And it'll be delivered by somebody that can put them in contact with the gospel, not just give them the gift in the name of Jesus, but introduce them to the eternal truth of the uh, gospel of Christ. And we've talked about some of the things that you can buy uh, for them. I mentioned Debbie and I are given a sewing machine, uh, 85 bucks. That enables a woman. It's foot powered, so you don't need electricity for it. She can sew for her family. She can make clothes to sell. You can uh, give a pair of chickens for just $11. You can make a lasting impact on somebody's life for just $11. And that's uh, that, I think, is maybe the most popular gift we receive more donations for chickens than for anything except for Jesus wells. Now, the Jesus well, that's a terrific gift. That's 1000 bucks, and it'll provide clean drinking water for cooking and for drinking for an entire village. So it's a marvelous, marvelous gift. You literally can save the lives of people in an entire village with the Jesus well. So the, the greatest number of dollars have gone to the Jesus wells, but right behind it is chickens. And then right behind that is goats. For 70 bucks. you can send a family uh, goats. They're hardy animals. They do well in the Asian climate. They'll produce one offspring a year, a little kid, I guess what they call them, generate a lot of milk. You can drink it. You can sell it. Uh, they reproduce, so you can sell it for food. You can eat it. So a great way to bring joy into a poor families. There were a lot of other gifts there, water buffaloes, which is like the John Deere tractor of Asia, a pair of lambs for $130. That's been a very, very popular gift. The barnyard bundle for 678 bucks. You can send six chickens, two goats, a lamb, a cow, two pigs, and a partridge in a pear tree. You know, I threw that last part in there. We'll throw that in. New gift this year of an outdoor toilet. That's a tremendous impact for uh, uh, help with sanitation because that becomes a real problem, uh, making sure that you don't have drinking water mixed with wastewater and all that kind of thing. Biosand water filter for 30 bucks. That'll provide clean drinking water for cooking as well as drinking for a family and others who live around them. Anyway, there's a lot of other gifts. You can go to AFR.net. You can also call 607-907-GOAT, 877-907-GOAT, and get more information. See the catalog and make your gift online. Again, thanks for helping us. We're 71% of the way there, shooting for to make our 100% of our goal by Christmas. Now, with me in our studio is uh, Charlie Butts. He's a reporter with our news division, One News Now. Uh, Charlie, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Mm, glad to be here. And Charlie, one of the reasons I wanted to bring you in and uh, talk with you is that you have actually been on the field with Gospel for Asia. So you have seen what we're talking about. You've seen it in action. So tell us under what circumstances you wound up going to Asia with Gospel for Asia. There was a tsunami that struck uh, a number of years ago in Chennai in southern India, and it really did a lot of wreckage. I don't recall how many people were killed, but a tremendous number of people that were killed, houses that were wiped out, etc. India does not have the infrastructure to deal with this sort of thing. In Gospel for Asia, more often than not, is the first responder when this sort of situation goes on. Gospel Asia was there with food. They started constructing shelter. They brought in medical folks at their own expense to minister to these people and their medical needs. 
And in addition to that, because of the donations that, that came from people like us, they were able to buy numerous boats, and they formed partnerships between Hindus and Christians, and they shared those boats. And I think when I was there, they were praying and blessing those boats. It's something like about 24 or 25 boats. Well, you know, and Charlie, I just love that. I just love that part of what you were describing, that these gifts of these boats, they went to Christians and they went to Hindus alike in the name of Jesus. You know, it reminds me of what Jesus said in Matthew 5 when he was talking about how God's rain falls on the just and the unjust. Yes. And some people think that rain is a bad thing, but when you look at the context there, rain's a good thing. That's what makes crops grow. Mm -hmm. And the point that Jesus made is, look, your Heavenly Father, when he provides rain for farmers, he doesn't check to see whether they're followers of Jesus or not. He gives them all rain. His rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. So that's really something being done in the spirit of Christ. Well, besides that, uh, going out on the boats, Hindus and Christians, if lightning does strike, it's a perfect opportunity for the Christian to witness. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Time of great need. Well, and so you're talking about um, some like, like the boats and what was distributed, some of the very pra practical help that was given by Gospel for Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, so did did were they distributing some of the gifts that we're talking about here on that, on that particular trip? Were they di distributing some of these other gifts, these other animals and critters and gifts and so forth. Uh, they weren't distributing the animals at that particular time because that was the urgent need. So they were responding to the pressure of this tsunami. So yes. that was the, the urgent need, and that's what they were trying to deal with. That's right. And another need that developed was so many parents were killed, and it left orphans, uh, girls and boys that were left out on the streets with uh, no family to go to and even relatives could not accept them because they were too poor to do so. They didn't have the economic means. And so Bridges of Hope, which is a, a, a program of Gospel for Asia, took these children in. And while I was there, I went to one of the Bridges of Hope schools, and there were five little girls, nine or ten years old, that had been immersed in the Bible, came from different backgrounds. They had been taught some English, and they were singing Christian songs for us in English. And they rescued those girls. And what I mean by rescue is there's a problem with trafficking over there. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes some of those uh, children, when they become homeless, end up trafficked for immoral purposes. Mm. So really giving those children a, a life and a future and, and hope mm -hmm. and some shot at some kind of uh, a life that would, we would consider a normal life. Which and otherwise it, they wouldn't have had a, uh, uh, even had an opportunity to pursue. And they provided education for them as well. <clears throat> now let me ask this last question, uh, Charlie. Oh, by the way, let me let me ask you two last questions. One has to do, you know, we've talked about the fact that the people that Gospel for Asia reaches out to are a lot of times very, very poor people, people with very mm. limited means. And I, 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 I'm, I'm guessing that you saw some of that dynamic really touching people that had really severe economic needs. You can't help but see it because it's an extremely, uh, uh, um, there's a lot of people live there. <laughs> and you can only drive about 30 to 35 miles per hour in much of India. And so you are struck with uh, pictures in your mind of the poverty that goes on. Uh, people walking the streets are looking for some little thing that they can do for somebody just to make a, uh, make a little bit of money to buy food for their family. But then you have Gospel for Asia that comes along and provides a goat or chickens or something like that. They can not only provide for their family a little better in terms of nourishment, but then they can reach out and sell these products to other people. Mm. Another thing you can do, do with goats is make feta cheese. I don't know if that's popular in India or not, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it yeah. is done. Yeah. Well, one last question, Charlie, before I let you go. Uh, you know, you, you went there with Gospel for Asia, and maybe you know, I think people uh, that are going to be involved with a charity, an outreach, a ministry like Gospel for Asia, you know, they want to have some reassurance that there is integrity there, that there is a purity of purpose and mission and so forth. So tell us what you saw about the kind of ministry that, Gospel for Asia is, and what's the heartbeat of what uh, of that organization? Well, the heartbeat is Christ. Uh, uh, these are people, um, they train up people as ministers, as uh, people to go out among the community, and sometimes their lives are, are threatened, they're beaten up, they're jailed, and yet they will uh, serve their time and get back out and go right back into the same area to promote the gospel. They are so sincere about being bringing people to Christ because that's the only true hope that they have. Mm. And at the same time, they minister to them in these other projects 
that our audience is helping to uh, finance. Mm. Well, and we've talked about this before, too. Uh, you know, in India, they've got a group of people called the Dalits who are the poorest of the poor. There's yes. a pretty rigid caste system there in India. I mean, legally, the caste system is gone, but it's still it's still in effect. And so these people, unless somebody from the outside is willing to kind of break through that wall and kind of provide them with some practical help, a lot of these people are just going to be stuck in this grinding poverty for the rest of their lives and their children after them. Well, I would venture to say that, uh, of course, Gospel for Asia will reach out for anybody with a message of the gospel, but I, I would venture to say that most of the people that are impacted are in the lower classes and perhaps Dalits, mm-hmm. who are considered less than animals in mm-hmm. terms of value. Yeah. All right, my guest has been Charlie Butts. He is a reporter extraordinaire for our news division, One News Now. Uh, Charlie, I want to thank you for taking time to drop in and uh, and spend a few minutes with us. So once again, we're working on this Gospel for Asia, the Christmas Critter campaign. You've heard Charlie talk about his trip to the field and the work that Gospel for Asia does there. And again, with a gift, you can go to afa.net or afr.net. You can also uh, call a number, 877-907-GOAT, to get all the information that you need. Go to afr.net. You can browse through the catalog. You can make a purchase of your gift uh, right there online, and we hope you will do that and make uh, Christmas a lot brighter for a lot of these very needy families uh, in uh, in Asia, some of the poorest uh, of the poor. And again, uh, just a great range of uh, gifts. You know, one of the ones I like, it hadn't been real popular, but, you know, this is, if I lived there, this is the gift that I would want. Because uh, I've actually thought about doing something similar like this, even in America. Um, and that is the gift of a rickshaw. So for 200 bucks, you can send a rickshaw to a man. This is like a, a, a pedicab. It's like driving a taxi cab, only you pedal it. And uh, it's a dignified job. This is a dignified job for somebody of low caste, poverty-stricken backgrounds. Most of these people are too poor to be able to afford their own rickshaw. But for $200, you can put one of these in the hands of a head of his household. He can work hard. Uh, it can take up to half a day's wages to rent one of these things. You can make it possible for him to own one. That way they don't have to wait in line for a rental rickshaw, and they get to keep a lot more of their hard-earned money. That for just $200 you can send a rickshaw to a man and he can provide for his family. Well, that's uh, it for this segment. Charlie, again, thank you. God bless you. And we'll be right back with more Focal Point AFR Talk. Stay with us. All right. 